How's it going, everybody? Welcome back. And today I'm going to show you guys how you can torrent safely. So, uh, of course, I'm going to be using one of these VPNs, but you do have the option of using the other two. So if you guys are interested in any of these VPNs, which I'll be talking about briefly at the end of the video, you'll find links to special deals and discounts in the description down below, as well as full reviews if you'd like to learn more about these VPNs with regards to their privacy policies, speed streaming and torrenting capabilities, as well as security and features. Okay, so when it comes to torrenting, first of all, I would highly advise that you guys check the legality of downloading uh, files in your country. So in Japan, for example, you could be facing up to two years in jail for downloading and 10 years for uploading. So uh, it really depends on the country you're living in. Um, of course, you could avoid uh, the whole headache here by just using a VPN and obfuscating your real IP address by masking it using one of these VPNs. Um, but regardless, you know, you should just make sure that you're doing everything legally within the uh, bounds of uh, the law and you should not bypass the law in any way. So just make sure that you check your own local laws. So in the States, for example, if you happen to download any copyrighted material, uh, you will receive a warning, just a warning letter from your ISP, just to let you know that they've noticed that you've been downloading copyrighted material and uh, they would hope that you would refrain from that. And if you keep doing so, you might risk um, terminating your subscription with them. So uh, in the Netherlands, for example, you are actually allowed to download whatever you want even if it's copyrighted material, as long as it is just for personal use. So yeah, as you can tell, it really differs between countries. So what you can do, of course, to keep yourself safe when downloading torrents, uh, obviously, when you're downloading torrents, you are engaging in peer to peer activities, which could open you up to uh, adware, malware and whatnot. So you want to mask your IP address and keep yourself in encrypted in the encrypted servers of VPNs rather than using your real IP address to uh, download torrents, especially when you're searching for torrents in, uh, you know, like Pirate Bay or any of the torrenting websites, which can be full of misleading files that could lead you into downloading things you really don't want to download. There have been many cases where uh, people download files and they don't realize that there are some side files that are downloaded alongside these files and it could lead to uh, installing malware, adware, and in some cases viruses onto your computer, um, uh, compromising your entire system or some of the sensitive information that could be uh, on your computer. So uh, it's best if you just uh, keep yourself encrypted and keep your uh, real IP address masked and encrypted within these secured servers of the VPNs. Of course, all these VPNs do use the standard 256-bit encryption. They all have a solid no logs policy. And of course, they have the kill switch and split telling, which are basic security features that you should be finding in every premium VPN. And of course, they all support peer-to-peer -peer activity. So if you didn't know, just, just in case you didn't know, uh, the kill switch will stop your internet traffic and make sure that you're only connected to the internet through the VPN encrypted servers. So if your uh, VPN is on and you lose connection to your VPN, you won't reconnect to your ISP servers. You will completely disconnect from the internet until you reconnect back to the uh, VPN. So this makes sure that there are no leaks whatsoever. Split tunneling will allow to choose which applications are routed through the VPN and which are not. So this can be useful. So, you know, maybe you don't want your entire network to be affected by the VPN tunneling. So you could just keep uh, one application using the VPN while the rest of your network is left intact. So this can be very useful, especially when torrenting. Again, all these VPNs do support peer to peer activities. And, you know, the high speeds, the very high speeds really help out here. Um, okay, so with regards to torrenting safely, you want to take a few measures. First of all, before engaging in any kind of torrenting activity, uh, just to keep yourself safe, turn on the uh, kill switch. Now I'm going to be using ExpressVPN to demonstrate. I'll briefly talk about these VPNs at the end of the video. Or if you would like, if you don't want your entire connection to use the VPN and you just want, let's say, your torrenting client to use the VPN, you can use split tunneling. I'm not going to use it in this case. Okay, so let's just turn this off. I have my kill switch on. 
I have the best performing protocol on, which will be lightweight UDP. And let's just go ahead and connect to, let's say, the United States server. And once I'm connected to a server, then I'm good to go. I do have a uh, public domain torrent here and let me just uh, go ahead and click it so i've already downloaded the file i have qubit torrent uh, to use when it comes to my torrenting client and i'll just go ahead and click the file um, of course when you download a torrent you'll get a file that leads you to the torrenting client and uh, as you can tell here charlie chaplin uh, and i'll just hit okay and um, I should be able to just force resume. As you can tell, if the VPN doesn't support peer-to-peer -peer activity, you will not be able to download it at all. Uh, now, my internet speed is not actually that impressive, so don't take my speed as an example. Uh, but overall, the speed of ExpressVPN is uh, one of the best, really. Um, I would say ExpressVPN and NordVPN are sort of on equal footing when it comes to speed, followed up by Surfshark. ExpressVPN has over 3,000 servers in 94 countries and will allow you to secure up to five devices per subscription. NordVPN with over 5,100 servers in 60 countries and will allow you to secure up to six devices per subscription. And Surfshark, one of the only VPNs that allows for an unlimited number of devices to be secured with just one subscription. And you've got over 3,200 servers in 65 countries. And just to show you guys, uh, NordVPN does have the basic features, of course, as I just mentioned earlier. Uh, you've got the kill switch, but you do get an app kill switch, which will close selected apps when you disconnect from the VPN or the connection drops rather than disconnecting your entire connection. So this is uh, this could be very useful for you guys who don't want uh, your entire connection to be uh, disconnected uh, when you disconnect from the VPN. Okay, and advanced settings here, you've got custom DNS, which is an easy way to change your uh, DNS and obfuscated servers if you're in a censorship heavy country. And of course, you get specialty servers right here, including the peer-to-peer -peer specialty servers. And if you switch to open VPN, you get access to two extra specialty servers, dedicated IP and double VPN. Now, with regards to peer-to-peer -peer servers, I honestly, personally speaking, I didn't notice any specific advantages over using the regular servers, but that's just me. You could have a different experience. With Surfshark, you know, you're still getting multi-op and static IP, which are the same as double VPN and de dedicated IP, if you didn't know what these are. Dedicated IP or static IP will give you the same IP every time you return to these servers. So <clears throat> they're not dynamic IPs. They're the same IP addresses that you can return to every single time. Multi-hop or double VPN will route your connection to two servers rather than one for extra security. And of course, you're still getting the uh, basic features here, split tunneling, which is called whitelister in Surfshark, and you've got the kill switch and an ad blocker. Um, and of course, you still get a handful of protocols right here. The best performing protocol would definitely be the WireGuard protocol and no borders mode to help you bypass the great firewall of China if you're in China. So that'll be it for this video. Uh, this is pretty much how you uh, torrent safely and keep yourself safe. It really is as simple as downloading a reliable VPN with a solid no logs policy and then just opening up your uh, v uh, your torrenting client, excuse me. So I'm gonna just go ahead and delete that. I don't read it, need it, I just wanted to kind of demonstrate for you guys. And that'll be it for this video. Again, if you guys are interested in any of these VPNs, you'll find links to special deals and discounts in the description down below, as well as full reviews if you'd like to learn more about these VPNs. And keep in mind that all these VPNs are covered by a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you are able to claim the refund, even if you just get the one-month plan. Granted, you ask for it before the 30th day, and you'll be able to uh, claim it through the uh, website. Each of these VPN providers' websites, just hover over the bottom right on the website, and you can access the 24-7 live chat support and ask them for your refund and they'll be able to refund you within three to five business days comment below if you have any questions i'll be happy to answer all of them like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel and stay up to date with everything vpns and cybersecurity. thank you guys very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one have a wonderful day